First, there are billions of years of the history of the Earth when the planet forms itself, by itself, into something like the planet we inhabit today. It's only much later that human history begins. And then, only after hundreds and thousands of years, that we begin to tell ourselves stories about the start of things. I make films with found film and um, archive film. I made a decision about 10 years ago that there was enough imagery in the world already to stop generating more imagery and that I would only look at images that were um, that had already been recorded and look at what was already there and think of the image as a, for its enigmatic quality. And so um, that's the way I work with film. I'm not um, working from a recording principle. I'm working to work with archive material. So I was very drawn for this particular piece to make use of things like drone footage where a camera can move seamlessly over possibly the most difficult situations that you can imagine and just let that irony resonate a little bit. Instead of a garden, our inheritance is a longing that somewhere in our future, somewhere in our past, we're not sure which, exists a possibility. Paradise. To be above the image is important to me because I think this is a question about the planet. It's about, uh, about the way we look at the planet, how we reflect on things. And so to be above an image puts us in a different power relationship to it. So rather than it being an image that dominates us, we're surveying it in the way that we're usually surveyed and we can have a different sort of um, uh, approach to the image in front of us. My original idea came from finding out about the oil conference that Richard DeMarco organised in Edinburgh in 1974. Um, oil and gas hadn't yet been excavated in the North Sea, but the British government were considering selling licences on a big scale for the first time. And Scotland obviously didn't have a say, a direct say in what was going to happen. And so conversations were happening, but whether or not they would land or whether or not they would have an influence on what was going to go ahead um, was very significant at the time. So Richard DeMarco, who um, is an artist in his own right and a gallerist, um, started a conversation with Joseph Boyce about whether or not they could do something. And th they began to ask each other questions about what was possible. And they decided to set up a conference at the Edinburgh Festival. Which, which was an artist conference. So it wasn't a sort of formal academic conference or a political conference, it was um, from an artist principle. And so that was the starting point for the film. But then as the film went on, I became more and more interested in Boyce himself. Imagine that you're at the start of things. You're destined to be an artist, one of the greatest artists in the world. But before that can happen, a war starts. Before you can live your life, you'll be taught to kill. He did several um, projects which were in a way were a reparation for what he'd done during the Second World War. He'd been a German pilot, he'd bombed areas of Italy while at the same time loving Italy <laughs> and loving it from, from what he'd learnt and what he'd studied about art and what he'd understood in the past. And then suddenly he was in war in that country and so in later life, he returned and he thought of different ways to make reparation, and um, one of those was in Bolognano, which you can see sort of behind me. Um, it's in Abruzzo, in a very um, remote part of Abruzzo. And he had the idea that he would bomb the area with seeds in an act of reparation for the bombing that he'd done during the war. He was really making art in the middle to end of the last century that is so relevant now. It's like um, a magic prophecy that we really need what he gave us then, now. I sort of reference uh, Winnicott in the film. Winnicott's a psychoanalyst, wonderful writer about psychoanalysis, and he talked about how the only thing that made everybody happy, and perhaps it sounds a bit comp it's compulsory to be this, but the only thing that made everybody happy was creativity. And you can think about it in any form, but the one thing at the end of the day that makes us all happy is creativity rather than the kind of conformity and um, rigidity that life offers us the rest of the time. And I just think that that's what art offers. It offers spaces where people 
can come to it as viewers or practitioners and can feel like, maybe I want to join in with this, maybe this inspires me to do something else. We can see the world a different way. And now when we're facing questions like climate change and um, the terrible situations of conflict that we have at the moment, everyone sort of feels daunted, I think, and there's no single thing that we can all think off the top of our heads to do. But at least with art, we can feel like we can meet in a room, we can see something at the same time as some other random people, and we can experience that thing at the same time, and maybe a new thought can come. Maybe we can make a choice to do something differently. Maybe we can see the world differently. Maybe it gives us a little bit of an incentive to do something else. And I don't think that the... I don't think that we can always offer answers. I think we can offer questions, really, and frame new questions for people to, for everybody, <laughs> to think about what's possible. <laughs>